Hey, hey, this is Dan. We are talking to you today about cPanel. We're going to go over uh, much of the cool stuff that you can do in cPanel. You might not have a cPanel. It depends upon your hosting company whether they um, whether they use a, a cPanel function or not. cPanel is an independent company that provides a service to hosting companies, and that service is this dashboard that's called cPanel, and it's got all kinds of cool stuff in it to make your life easier. Um, if you're looking for uh, a good one, danmorrismarketing.com slash hosting takes you directly uh, to a great hosting company that uh, has a cPanel, and that is the one that I'm using. So as you know, uh, I write letters from dan.com, so as you can see in the URL bar up here, I have written letters from dan.com slash cPanel. Open, this opens, pops up. Uh, I put my username and password in, and voila, look at that. I'm in the cPanel. Now your cPanel might look a little bit different um, for using a different kind of hosting company. And in fact, you can go down to this button called Change Style. Let me go back to that. I went uh, to the preferences. Somewhere yours will have preferences. You can put it in the tab if you want. Um, and change style right there. And you can actually pick the way you want your cPanel to load up. They all are basically the same. A little bit different colors. You can switch to whatever you want. Um, I currently have the HostGator one. That's the one I like. Alright, so let's get into the panel. Let's see what kind of fun stuff is here. Alright, first, on this one, you have special offers, and on this one, it has HostGator links. These are really just, uh, well, the special offers is just what it sounds like. Uh, companies that are paying to have their link put on the cPanel, um, basically another place to get your stuff. WordPress themes, that takes you to SiteLock, uh, this takes you to dreamtemplate.com, this takes you to freewebdesignquotes.com. This takes you to ipaymentusa.com. So, as far as I'm concerned, you can skip those. These are your hosting company specific things. If you have a trouble ticket, if you need live support chat, um, they have templates that you can choose for your website. I don't know what support portal is. Um, I don't use that. I'll show you where this account add-ons is somewhere else in the cPanel. We'll go over that. And this is, uh, if you're using, in this particular case, uh, HostGator, this is to check out your billing. So then we're down to preferences. And this is basically the preferences that have to do with cPanel. So like I showed you, you can change the, sh the style. You can change the language, um, change your paste password. There's, uh, you can actually, shortcuts is, they will give you, you know, I'll take it. You can drag this thing to your desktop and then you'll have a cPanel button right on your desktop and there's another one for email so those three are ba basically uh, well other than change style they're basically useless now if we go over here the find function you, I don't know if you'll need that announcements is useless although that does sound interesting you might want to check that out HostGators offering some sort of shopping cart system uh, Google AdWords is an advertisement. Bing and Yahoo is an advertisement. WordPress is not an ad well, that is an advertisement too, and so is Website Builders, which is the same thing as up here. So the stuff on the sidebar, um, top sidebar, you won't really need. Uh, and up here, preferences, host gator links, special offers, special offers you won't need. So that brings us down to mail. Now here is where we get into the good meat of the stuff. So we have email accounts. This is if you if you buy uh, you know yourname.com. This is where you set up Bob at yourname.com or info at yourname.com or domain at yourname.com. This is where you set it up. Um, webmail is where you access your mail. Um, I don't know what box trapper. Oh, box trapper and spam assassin are both uh, spam filters. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna need those or not. Forwarder. This is what I use. I use the email account and the forwarder immediately. I don't use this webmail. I'll show you why here in a second. You can actually set up an autoresponder, um, which is uh, basically an out-of-office reply type thing that will reply 
to a person who sends an email to a specified address. Uh, you can create a mailing list. Um, I don't know what these are. You, this here, email delivery route, you can put your email address in and it will tell you the path by which email gets sent to you. So the server name, the server numbers, the IP addresses. I don't know why that's important, but you might need that sometime if you come across some sort of fraud or something. Um, importing addresses and forwarders. If you have another account, this is where you would go to import everything you did from another cPanel. So let's go up to email accounts. This is where you can set up uh, your email accounts. So here you would type in Bob and then you would pick from your domain names that you own, uh, whichever one you want. BloomingtonHousePainter.com, Bob at Bloomington House Painter. You give it a password, the password again. It will make you pick one that's um, pretty good, and then you press create account. So then you get, you know, you can create whatever emails that you want. You can create as many as you want. Uh, and that's simple. It's very simple. And once you create it, it exists, and mail can be sent to it. Now that mail will come to this webmail thing. And you gotta you gotta log in. You get to look at it through one of these services. I use Squirrel. Doesn't matter though. Each each of them is gonna take you to an inbox, and that's where you can get your mail. Um, that all that stuff is pretty easy. But I don't like it. I don't use it. I use Gmail. So let's just say you, you set up Bob at BloomingtonHousePainter.com in the email accounts. Then I would go over here to the forwarders. And where's the button? I would add a forwarder. So I would add Bob at what was that? BloomingtonHousePainter.com. Bob at BloomingtonHousePainter.com. And I would put in my forward address, my Gmail address right there. So if anything, uh, if any email comes in to Bob at BloomingtonHousePainter.com, I want it to go to Gmail. Now, let me show you Gmail. If you go up here, to mail settings. Hello. Okay. Mail settings. Accounts and import. Now, these are, there's probably a hundred, but here's a few of them. You can import mail. You don't really want to import it, but you can send mail as. So, if you want to send mail as Bob from Bloomington at BloomingtonHousePainter.com, if you want it to arrive in someone's mailbox with that name, then you can go in here, add another email address, and follow their rules. So here you could put Bob at BloomingtonHousePainter.com. and you want to send it through Gmail, easy to set up. And it's going to send a verification. Now that verification is going to go to Bob at BloomingtonHousePainter.com. But if you forwarded it already in your cPanel, if you forwarded it to your Gmail account, it's going to go straight to your Gmail account. And then uh, you're going to open it and you're going to click on the verification link. And then uh, all of a sudden, when you Compose mail. Bob at Bloomington House Painter is going to show up in here. You can pick any of these at any time, and uh, that's who you're sending it from. So that's how that works. Um, and a forwarder is great. You can have all of your email addresses managed in Gmail, uh, and you can actually do that in really a very, very short period of time. You set up the email account, you forward it, you go to Gmail. You go to the settings, you go to accounts and import, you go to the send mail as, you type in your email address, you have it send uh, email to, to yourself, you click on the verification, and it's done. Seconds. So if you uh, were going to go to a conference, and all of a sudden you wanted to get, if you're going to go to NAMS in uh, February, and you wanted to have a special email address for you know NAMS at your site.com, you wanted people to email you, you could set it up. You know, in the plane, uh, in the car on the way over. It doesn't take any work whatsoever. So that's email. Email, forwarder. If you don't want to use the forwarder and send it to Gmail or send it to wherever, 
you can access your stuff from Hotmail. You can enable a spam filter um, and you can set up autoresponders. So let's go down here. Free search engine optimization tools. I would say look at these tools on your own. They're just tools. Uh, they're no better than anything else that you see. They're just available. File manager. Files. Uh, let's skip that first. We're going to come back to files. We're going to go straight to... Let's go straight... No, let's do files. We're already there. Let's not confuse things, eh? Alright, so... If you want to create a website, and let's say it's not a WordPress website, you can use the file manager to... We're going to go to the public... Oh, to the home directory. There's already websites in here. That's the problem. So you want to go to the home directory. And right here, you're going to see public-html. You can upload. There's the upload button. You can upload your website right here in the file manager. Um, in fact, I would go to YouTube and I would look at, um, I would look for a tutorial called um, cPanel File Manager and it will take you step by step and show you some of the things, the code editor and change permissions, some of the things that you need to do to make your site secure. Um, so I would do that. But that's where you do, that's where you upload your pages. Now, I don't actually use File Manager or Legacy File Manager. Both of them are the same purpose, um, but one has one's more advanced. I believe Legacy File Ma Manager is a bit more advanced. Um, I use FileZilla. Uh, FileZilla is a free tool that allows you to upload your website to your host. So, so you would go in here and you would write the letters FTP dot and then your website address and then you would use your cPanel username and password and you would have gotten this in an email from your hosting company and you would press quick connect establish a con board previous connection and connect in current tab alright so I'm re I'm re hooked up to all my websites um, and you can see on this side over here this is my computer that I'm sitting at and over here is the public internet where my sites are so let's just say I have here's a a picture if I want to upload this picture to the to one of my websites a public HTML and then you go down and find the website um, I'm not sure what has Twitter glitch might have uh, an images file so images there's an image file so I could actually take this from my computer, I could drag it right over to the images file, and there it would be. And then if I had a you know a web, I, had, I made a page that referenced that image, then it would uh, it would be there instantly. Um, you can delete files using uh, the FileZilla, the same as uh, you would with File Manager in your cPanel. Um, it's very easy to create a web page using. Uh, I think I use NVU, but there are, there are definitely a bunch of HTML editors you can use. Uh, you just create the page, you save it as .html. Somebody's probably going to contradict that, but that's what I would do. Save it as .html, and then uh, put it on your. I mean, you can put it on your desktop to make it easy. And then here's your desktop. It's open. Just drag it over. Drag it right into uh, right into the domain name. Right into the C the public dash HTML. So that is uh, th that brief tutorial right there was showing you how to upload a website using either File Manager or using the third-party site FileZilla. Um, either bo both of which are quite easy. Uh, backups. This shows you how to make uh, backups of your website. Um, you can schedule them. You can download a full backup right now uh, you can do all that kind of stuff that you might want to go to YouTube and 
search for cPanel backups if you want to do that specifically. But there is a wizard to make it quite easy for you. Uh, logs. This is basically analytics right here. Um, Google Analytics integration. I don't know why. Well, the reason that you might want to use Google Analytics integration is if you don't want your Google code, your analytics code, to show up on your website. Because there are tools out there that can, you know, once the tool finds your one website, it can go search the web for all your other websites that have, you know, the similar account number in the tool. So somebody could find out what all your websites are at once. If you use the Google Anal Analytics integration tool, it basic you paste your Google code into the tool. You have to pick, you know, which one you want and all that. Um, you paste in the code and then it dynamically adds the code as the page is displayed so it's never actually saved on there it's kind of interesting um, AW stats is a really weak version of uh, Google Analytics in terms of giving you traffic to your site um, I'm trying to find something that would be good furniture stores in Nashville I doubt that gets any traffic yet we shall see October. Here's a bunch of traffic, unique visitors, number of visits. Um, gives you all kinds of traffic information. And that's just automatic when you use cPanel. You don't have to put any code on your site. It tracks all that kind of stuff for you. I don't... This stuff differs from analytics to some degree. So, um, you know, I guess take it with a grain of salt. Watch it for trends more than for exact numbers. Uh, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of information on there. Um, but that's AW stats. Where did we go? AW stats is also right here. This little uh, I don't know. This little widget that shows you some statistics that comes from here. Um, latest visitors. That shows you some more statistics. These are just all statistics things. Security. This might be something to ask Regina Smola about. Um, I don't really know much about that. I would have somebody do that for you. Domains. I use add-on domains. Whenever you buy you know, a new domain name at your, you know, wherever you're buying them, GoDaddy or whatever, you type in that domain name, um, you fill out this, you leave this blank and this blank, and you put a password and a password, and you press add domain, and then that domain is added to your hosting account. So you can buy one today. You could set the name servers at GoDaddy to your hosting company, and your hosting company will send you an email that tells you how to do that. As soon as you do that, you come over here and you add the domain, and then it's added. And then when it is added, and you do this email accounts thing, your domain is going to show up in this list because you've already added it. That's how it gets into that list. Um, what else do we have? Domains. I do not know what a MySQL database is, but on several occasions I have had to upload software that has told me I have to go create a MySQL database, and it has given me the instructions of how to do that, and I have done it. I do not know what it means, uh, but I did follow the directions and did it successfully. I did not even use this database wizard thing. So if somebody tells you you need a SQL database, here's where you go to do it. Software. Fantastico is your friend. Let's click Fantastico. Fantastico is the fastest way on the planet to upload a website to your domain name. So let's just say you just bought your site.com and you want to put WordPress on it. You go to Fantastic. Well, you have to add the domain first in the add-on domains. Um, and then you go to Fantastico and you press WordPress. And then you press new installation. And then you pick from the the list. And if you add it on your domain, your new one will show up in the list. And you leave that blank. And you put a password in here and a password in here. And you write those down. And you don't have to do any of that. That doesn't matter. And then you press install. And about three seconds later, WordPress is on your site. It's done. It's fast. And that goes with all these other things, too. You can even create a help desk. Um, if you wanted to create a help desk, 
support logic help desk you would I'm trying I'm reading right here um, you would find your domain name and then you would install it in like slash help but you would write the word help right there not see how it says if you're gonna put it in domain dash name enter the word name only so you want to write the word help so if you put you know if you have your site slash help you can actually put a help desk right on it you can do support ticket system right on it you can do uh, OS ticket right on it um, you can create a forum or a discussion board right in your site um, php.bb is a really popular bulletin board uh, you can ask a frequent frequently asked questions type deal uh, image galleries mailing lists polls and surveys um, site builders uh, you can create a wiki on your site uh, you can do all kinds of stuff in the Fantastico now the key here is knowing that when you use Fantastico it is a formula and lots of people understand the formula so your site becomes easy to break into so you need to go um, I think if you go to danmorphmarketing.com slash EWP, you can get a tutorial on how to manually change a few settings to make your uh, your site more uh, secure, much more secure, in fact. So that's danmorphmarketing.com slash EWP. If that doesn't work, uh, I guess YouTube it, see what you can find. But that is Fantastico, and Fantastico is fantastic fantastically fast. It is a great tool if you go to a party and somebody wants to know if you can set up a website in two minutes. You could you could literally buy the domain name, you could put in the new name servers, you could do the add-on here in cPanel, then you could go to Fantastico and upload the website, which I have done at many meetups and somehow it has always worked out. And down here there's more stuff I don't know anything about. Gotta love that. I did set up a cron job. Well, I followed the directions. I went in here and figured it out. I still do not know what it is, but I did it. I, I also set some Apache server using this, uh, and I did that when I was on live chat with HostGator, and they, worked, they walked me through what I needed to do. But I do not know what it was for or why I did it. But whatever it was, it worked. And then there's more information down here about your hosting. Um, that's pretty much it. So transfer your site to somebody else who is tells you the information about it. You can even register a domain there apparently. So sorry that was jogging up and down. So here is a quick recap. Special offers, host gator links in case you have a problem with your hosting company preferences that all has to do with this cPanel change the look of it change the password change the language going down to mail email accounts and forwarders are very important autoresponder is your out-of-office email um, webmail if you don't want to use gmail or some other good service like that tools click them have fun see what they do you can't hurt anything it'll open a new window File Manager and Legacy File Manager are ways to get your website up and live. If you build your website in NVU or any of the other free services, uh, LiveWriter, save it as an HTML. You can actually drag it into the appropriate public HTML file, and then your website will be live. Uh, AW Stats is a way to is a Google Analytics that's free and doesn't require any code. Analytics integration allows you to dynamically show your Google Analytics code to Google while you're there but otherwise it's not actually saved on your site. Security, uh, do a web search. Uh, Add-on domains, this is if you buy a new domain and you're adding it to your uh, your hosting account. Subdomains, if you already have uh, yoursite.com and you want to get specials.yoursite.com you can set up a subdomain. Um, parked and redirects I would do redirects in at your uh, at GoDaddy or wherever you buy it. I wouldn't do it in your hosting company. There's really no reason for it to go from GoDaddy to your hosting to be redirected to someplace else. You might as well just set it up there. 
this is where your MySQL database stuff is that may or may not come in handy for you. At least you know where it is, otherwise you're going to have to follow the instructions whether I show you how to do it or not. Fantastico and Quick Install, both of those are great easy ways to uh, load up a website as well as a support desk, um, a forum, uh, any a whole bunch of things. Frequently asked questions page that's you know that updates itself, all kinds of stuff. Uh, over here, information about your hosting, uh, information about backing up your sites. A uh, quick look at traffic. You can pick any particular site. Uh, traffic is Kozak, um, any of them. Nashville scooters. Um, add, add, add. WordPress. If you don't want to use Fantastico, you can click this and load up WordPress just as fast. No difference whatsoever. Just a different button. Um, that's pretty much it. That is cPanel in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't speak too fast, but there always is a pause button. And uh, appreciate you uh, taking your time to hang out. This is Dan, freeweeklymastermind.com. Letters from Dan.com and lots of more fun stuff. Talk to you soon.